אורי ירמיאס, שלום. And welcome to culture buzz. I'm honored to be with you. Uri, the honor is all ours. Yeah. And we are here uh, to congratulate you uh, as you just opened your new hotel in Akko, Akra, called The Effendi. The so, Effendi Hotel, yeah. Congratulations, Mazal Tov. Thank you very much. We need, we need the life. We need more hotels, and we need good hotels, and we need special boutique hotels. Yeah. Uri, you are, how shall we describe it, some kind of an Israeli icon, icon. an institute, one may say, thanks to your famous restaurant in Accra, Uri Buri. Yes. Will you be kind enough to share with us how did it all start? Uh, how many hours you have <laughs> <clears throat> it is not uh, it's not in three words that you can understand uh, explain how it started it is quite a story but uh, generally I was working in different works the last one was uh, uh, working as a private contractor for the United Nations forces in the Middle East uh, In document working for technical and uh, other things uh, which explains things. the good English uh, okay <laughs> you said it and um, so um, I worked there for a few years and I got fed up with this kind of a job I was looking for something uh, that will make a change in my life as a hobby diver uh, fishing and so on. <coughs> we, take, we, are, we, are we are experiencing a short technical uh, break, but Uri is back. Yeah, here we are. So as a diver? So, yes, as a diver and as a um, hobby cook, I started uh, to cook to, for my friends and so on, and they tried to convince me to open a fish restaurant. And it took years, and uh, suddenly I found myself uh, opening a fish restaurant. Why in Accra, of all places? I started in Aria, in Aria. 23 years ago. And um, after a few years, uh, I had some problems with the lease of the uh, place. And I moved to Accra, and I'm very happy about it. It made a whole change. because of the building, because everything else around it. All of Israel so, is happy about it. Yeah, I hope so. So uh, now, for the last 15 years, I'm in Akko. And um, it is um, strictly fish and seafood that we uh, prepare. One can safely say that this is one of the best restaurants in Israel. Uh, I'm not uh, trying to... compete. It's not a competition for me. It is an everyday hard work because it gets harder and harder to get good uh, materials, uh, mainly fresh fish. And uh, today, in, uh, when we have uh, storms or a few following days and so on, um, we are um, getting things flown in from uh, Rangy in Paris, France. Ah. near uh, Orly, okay. because uh, not we enough, have, we not have enough, to supply. Okay. Not enough supply? Yes, there is a shortage in uh, supply, and uh, a few days in the uh, rough sea, uh, we can get here only uh, fresh uh, water fish, and um, some of our customers are keen on uh, fresh sea uh, fish, so... Uh, you keep your clients satisfied? Uh, we're trying, yes. Right. This is, uh, most of our clients are, um, you know, repeating, it's not, uh, it's, uh, they, they keep coming back. They keep coming they back. They are loyal customers. We have a lot of royal, loyal, loyal and royal customers. Royal too. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some of them, if, uh, if they don't appear for a few days, the bank calls and says, what happens, we have to reduce your <laughs> credit, uh, credibility, you know. <laughs> so it is, uh, it is not, um, uh, not 
a kind of a restaurant that is in the center of the city where people pass by and drop in. 99% uh, of our customers are coming with intention to come to our restaurant and only 1% is uh, people that pass by and drop in. You know? So in the case of Uri Buri, it's not normal loyal customers, these are very loyal customers. As I said, royal loyal customers. Yeah. Uri, I can tell by listening to you that the restaurant for you, it's much more than food. It's much more than business. It's a mission. It's I some kind I don't of a mission. It a mission. It's a, it's a way of life. A way of life. You know, generally, um, uh, if you start to make a kitchen or a restaurant for business, it's a complete different event than making it because you see it a way of life. Uh, it is very hard to, uh, to be rich by making a restaurant or trying to get rich through a restaurant. It is, um, you're working when everybody is on vacation and when everybody is working, you're working as well. So you have, um, we say, eight days a week. And um, when I was in the army, I had an officer that said, if 24 hours a day are not sufficient in order to finish all your businesses, wake up an hour earlier, you know? We have so, the same commander. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> have you been to the Navy? <laughs> no, <laughs> I've been a bomb disposer. Okay. But, uh, uh, you know, here, here we have the same now, in between the hotel and the restaurant, uh, you need more than 24 hours a day and it's a bit uh, difficult. But I'm not complaining because this is something I choose for my way of life. If someone is complaining, it's my family because they want to see more of me. And um, I'm making ugly faces so they won't feel... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that they miss much. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uri, so we understand now more about Uri Buri, but we want to understand more about the Effendi. Mm -hmm. This took a huge investment. And I'm not only talking about the financial investment. We just had a, a wonderful tour in this brand new boutique hotel of yours. And this is amazing. I mean, the level of restoration, uh, the attention to the smallest detail. Where, this, where, did, where did this come from? Uh, first of all, this is another kind of uh, thing you start... Uh, not with the uh, calculations of return of investment or alternative for the money or XLs or um, working with sharp pencils and, uh, and um, coordinations and so on. The only point is here, no brain, there's big balls, luck and hormones, you know? It's the words of your commander again. Yeah, no, it is... Uh, <laughs> It is the conclusions. <laughs> and, uh, How long did it take? Eight and a half years. Wow. Yeah. And uh, if, if you see all the details and everything, and naturally we made mistakes and we had to make it all over again. Correction. Some yeah, corrections. But corrections are not corrections. They are taking off and starting all over again. Wow. Yeah. And uh, in some cases it was very costly in, uh, in money and others in time. So um, um, there is no uh, kind of, uh, of a work list that you have uh, to, to finish a house like this. Yeah? You know, like if you build a new house, uh, you know exactly, you have plans, you can do whatever you want. Here every piece of, uh, of plaster you take off and, and you find something wrong or a, a surprise behind it, kind of an opening you didn't know that exists, another cellar that uh, was not on the maps and uh, all kinds of things like this. And you have to decide what you're doing about it. And this is again to get all kinds of renewal of licenses by changing the uh, plans of the hotel. Uh, this is a, a very long procedure. Even from the bureaucratic point of view, it's unbelievable. Yeah. L lots of efforts and uh, lots of investment. Yes, it's all together. And 
there is a very special feeling in this uh, building, in this structure, that you are really connecting with Accra history. You just showed us the stones outside. This is almost unbelievable. How long back we go? This is, this is actually a house that is representing all the glorious times of Accra. And this is the reason why we had to conservate it to such high level. Because actually there is nothing like this anywhere in Israel. I don't know if many in the world. Because we have here a house that is built layer upon layer. It is built like uh, the first layer is from Byzantic time, which is like 1,500 years old. Wow. On top of it, but not theoretically, on top of it, you know, you see stones from the uh, cr uh, Crusaders time. We have the wine cellar, it's all built in Crusader time. And on the top of the Crusaders... But the, but the wine is not that old. Uh, not the wine, but the smell. <laughs> and they, on top of it, you have the... Uh, early Ottoman stones, which are like 500 years old. So it is really built uh, like this. And in each time, in each of these glorious times, it was a very rich people's house, or a palace, as we call it. Um, I didn't want to call it a palace, although the Effendi's palace was a much nicer name. But today, every gambling house and uh, <laughs> other houses are called palace. So it, it was not added, it would add anything. It is just everybody who comes in has an immediate feeling that he goes into something that is completely different, you know, it's, yeah. it's unusual. Not, and mainly, not, not to mention the view, the beautiful view from The view, above. the air, the light, everything is The special. breeze from the sea. Yeah, everything. Amazing. I mean, it's everything. Why the name? You pick the name, the Effendi? No, it was actually, an Effendi is a gentleman, is a... Is a like a lord, a distinguished England, person, and a distinguished person, and this house belonged to an effendi at his last part, you know. Um, and um, when I had to choose the name of the house, it's first of all to honor the effendis, you know, uh, former gentlemen, and uh, the connection to the um, Turkish mandate, the Turkish uh, was the uh, Turkish regime in the Ottoman time, and um, it was it is a part of this culture, this house in right. its upper part. You right. know, so uh, I didn't want to disconnect it from anything. This belongs to Akko, This belongs to the period, and uh, it was in the Fendi's house. So it's now in the Fendi Hotel. It, it felt right. The, the name felt right. Yeah, I, I could have called it a thousand names, but uh, but nothing would have. Um, had meaning like like this to connect the house to the name. Uri, what can we wish you for the future? Uh, a lot of um, satisfied guests that we see here, and uh, we wish to uh, bring Akko a bit of its glories in the past to return the glory to Akko because it is an amazing city. It is. it is one of the oldest cities of the world, and the most beautiful and the most unbelievable history it has. There is hardly any conqueror that has, was born in the last uh, thousands of years that didn't visit Akko. You know? Including We're Napoleon. About Na Napoleon and Caesar, Julius Caesar, and uh, Alexander Mukdon and uh, name it, everybody was here, you know. We prefer Uri. Alexander the yeah. Great. We okay. prefer Uri. Okay, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not a ruler, I'm not a conqueror, I'm not anything. I'm just a human being in a, in a row of uh, in a chain. others in a chain. And uh, I believe that uh, Akko is in my heart. And I believe that um, it is absolutely um, not reached the, the percent of its glo uh, glory was not represented in uh, all over the world you know it is it was a capital of the crusaders for a period of 104 years and uh, until 1291 when the place was uh, conquered by the mamluks uh, and the crusaders uh, left to Rhodes 
and built the city of Rhodes actually on the same uh, concept as Akko was built before. And uh, by the way, while we were digging the uh, cellar here, uh, we found um, a remain of the fire, a piece of half burnt wood. There was a remain of the big fire that was here 1291 when the house was burned down by the Mamluks. Part of the war, the battle? It was not part of the battle, it was after the battle. They, uh, they have, in, in, in former um, times, they have conquered before Akko from the Crusaders, they have left the house standing, you know, and when the Crusaders came back, they lived in their houses again. And the Mamluks, when they came the second time, they, they wanted to erase it. erase it to make the world forget the Crusaders' time. And uh, actually, the cellar remained as was because the whole upper part collapsed into it and kept it as, ah, as was, you know. Okay. And we came and cleaned it up. And we found um, like uh, plates and glasses and uh, coins and a jar, a nice jar. From the 13th century? Yes. Wow. And um, all in uh, some in good shape, and they were glazed. So these were Cyprus, um, Cyprus uh, clay that uh, is considered at the time like uh, Rosenthal, you know, today. So, uh, this was very rich people's house. Amazing. Amazing. At all times, actually, the, the, the way it was built, and actually the uh, Turkish hammam that we have here that is 400 years old. Have you you've seen it? Yes. Uh, this Beautiful. Is, yeah, this is also representing a very rich people's house that had a private hammam with all the heating systems and everything in it. And we have conservated to make it a kind of a part of a spa where we have here. Uri, I want to thank you very much. We have learned uh, quite a lot about you during this uh, conversation. Uh, one of the most beautiful things we have learned is how connected you are to the history of this city. And it explains why you are doing so much for the present and for the future of Accra. I'm not doing for the future. The future, you can't do anything. It has passed. And I, but I think that uh, by um, acknowledging the people about the history of Accra, and the power of a place, and uh, so on, we can make a change that will influence and affect every citizen in the city by creating a, a high level of tourism and bring in people of values, you know, in order to uh, learn about the city, to enjoy the different things, and the mixture of the population, Arabs, Jews, Druze, Christians, Baha'i, all of them living together in peace and, uh, you know, this is the um, future we want to see. So all you are investing in the future? Hmm? You are investing in the future? In the future, in the future but not in the past. In the future of Israel. Uri, thank you very much. All the best and good luck. Welcome.